Hi, I'm Casey Hinton. I'm from Whitesboro, Texas, and I'm the chair of the Eligibility League Committee. Uh, June 12th and 13th, we had a eligibility workshop for two days. I think it's the first time that uh, we've ever attempted to do that. Uh, it gave us the chance to study a lot of the uh, policy and uh, rule changes that would be uh, affected by eligibility. Uh, eligibility is really probably the hardest committee I've ever worked on. It's something that you spend a lot of time working on probably the last 10 years um, effect on our sport to try to make, see how the next three or four years uh, are gonna develop. So it's a very difficult thing to try to make accurate. And so this is the first workshop that we got to have. We're gonna try to make it an annual thing uh, because uh, I think that it was a situation where we got to do a lot of study and have a lot of conversation about where our industry is going. Um, to highlight some of that stuff, I would say that, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time on Category 1. Uh, category 1 is our base for our NRHA industry, and so we feel like it is very important. Um, so in the last year or so, last year we made a few changes to um, uh, our policy for that. And it seems like so far we've had good reports that everything is working really well. Um, there's one uh, new thing that would be a policy would be uh, uh, making the youth that would for a regular show if they have three or less that their points count. And uh, so that that was something that was missed under one of the top ten situations. So uh, that's a policy. Um, Another thing that would, this is a rule change, but we felt like in the, there's an intermediate horse, but it's under category five, and that intermediate horse needs to really be under um, category one where it can run with the novice horse. So it's been there, but it hasn't really been utilized, so we are gonna recommend a rule change to move it. Uh, so a rule change uh, has to be put in by December 15th and so then it would be voted on next year so really it wouldn't be in, come into effect until 2020. Uh, so the policies we can make by the August meeting but the rule changes it takes an extra year to, to get. So when you see something that we think is like that would help us. We made adjustments to the ride and slide. Try to make the ride and slide a little bit more um, uh, a ride and slide elevation to rookie and so so we adjusted that scale a little bit and we came up with a few more abbreviated patterns to try to improve uh, the ride and slide. Um, in the category two we've had the factor, factor uh, back only one uh, level, but we think now, since the cap is off of level one, that it should be you move factor up one one level or factor back one level per year. So we're going to make that as a that's going to be a policy. So we're going to try to move on that to be in effect for 2019. Um, because of our one year uh, flow. Uh, we discussed that uh, the lifetime cap for the level ones, uh, non-pro and open, uh, it, it really doesn't give us the same effect if we're gonna do the one up uh, for a single year, that it, we were gonna remove that. So that makes the flow go one up and so that a person wouldn't get caught in a situation where they're eligible for one, but not two, so they're a one, three, four. So if they only move up one, that would put them as a two, three, four. Uh, if they have a good successful year, they can one more level, they would move up to level three. So it took a two year situation to get that. If they don't have as much success, then they would move back to a one. So that, that level one is, you know, it, it's, uh, uh, 
Uh, it's really not an entry level um, um, uh, category. Uh, it is a full flowing, all four levels flow now. Um, but we did recommend a developing rider uh, situation in that level one. So it still gives uh, a place for show management to work on just like the developing horse Futurity and Derby situation. That's where they can do a developing rider situation, but um, levels one, two, three, four are revolving. And so that's uh, something that is, the developing rider would be more for the entry people, but our levels one, two, three, four keep flowing. Um, I think that those were our, we, we had uh, several different sheets of several different things that we discussed for two days, um, but it kind of narrowed it down to the ones that were gonna be something that we are gonna do policy or rule change on to make effect. And um, so definitely it's something that I think was very productive for us. Next year we hope to have it again, and hopefully that um, uh, we have a good turnout and we can do a, a very good job for NRHA. All right, hi, I'm Frank Costantini. I'm here this afternoon with Amanda Lester and Chloe Lawrence. Amanda, you have some questions you'd like to ask Chloe and I as far as what we do with Markel? I sure do, Frank. So what all does Markel cover? We cover farms and ranches, uh, equine mortality, commercial liability, and also autos. And Frank, what's so important about Markel? Well, we provide service. You know, it's a 24-hour claim service uh, anytime, day or night. If you can't get a hold of a Markel representative on our toll-free number, you know, as I tell people, you know, Chloe keeps her phone by her bedside all the time, and, and you know, unless I'm on a plane, my phone is on. So we've got about 24-hour service, you know, and I think that's very important because uh, horse people, as you know, have, have difficulty keeping a schedule. And what most people would consider the norm, horse people don't. It's just, it's just whatever the, the particular animal needs. And we'd like to offer the, the fact that we're available whenever they need us, you know. Horses don't know if it's Christmas, Easter, or the 4th of July. You know, every day is the same. Well, Frank and Chloe, thank you guys so much for your time. And thank you for your sponsorship of Virtual Horse Help and other reigning events and other shows and all that. You guys are a great part of this industry. Well, Amanda, we appreciate what you do. And... Uh, uh, with virtual horse help and also your contribution that you make and uh, the publicity you bring to companies like Markel and to people like Chloe and myself. Awesome guys, thank you Chloe for your time. Thank you and knowledge is power. <laughs>